your nervous system doesn't care about your happiness. It only cares about your survival. And sometimes what kept you alive in the past becomes the very thing that keeps you from truly living now. Hi, I'm Dr. Amy, and this is the Biology Behind It mini episode where we take one concept from the longer Biology of Trauma podcast episode and go deeper into one of the concepts in the biology behind it so that you can truly understand yourself. And if you're a practitioner, better help those that you are serving. I received this question on the show notes from this last week's episode from Marcus, a family physician in Denver. And he says, Dr. Amy, I have patients whose bodies clearly are holding trauma from decades ago. They have blood pressure spikes with stress. They can't sleep. They're constantly on edge. They think this is normal. What is happening that these responses persist long after the original threat is gone? And Marcus, this question gets to the heart of what we discussed in episode 127. So for any of you who have not yet listened or watched that, please do so. And yes, you can now both listen and watch to these podcast episodes. And you will go to the biologyoftrauma.com podcast webpage where you will find episode 127 on why the body is wired for danger, understanding trauma's impact on the nervous system. And as we look at the biology behind the stuckness and these survival mechanisms that get stuck, let's look at the research that has come through on what are these survival mechanisms? What are these survival mechanisms that were designed to be temporary but have become permanent? Every trauma response engages three survival mechanisms. Every trauma response engages three survival mechanisms. These mechanisms are dissociation, immobilization, and energy conservation. Again, dissociation or a protective mechanism that creates distance from overwhelming experiences, a disconnect from our present reality, whether a mental escape, guarding, bracing, an emotional distance, immobilization, a paralysis, a shock, and then energy conservation or a shutting down of systems to preserve resources during threat. And this will feel like energy depletion. These are the three mechanisms that get engaged. What happens when these survival responses never get to complete, never have their sense of reset to safety, never have that sense that the story is over. It creates what I call the body trauma loop. This is how the body gets stuck cycling between the survival states, the survival states being the stress and sympathetic or fight and flight and the shutdown or the trauma response, which is the dorsal vagal the collapse, overwhelm, and it never returns to that calm, alive state, parasympathetic, ventral vagal, where healing and recovery happens. And here's the biology behind it. Every trauma response is designed to complete. That's how our body is designed. Just like we're designed to take a deep breath in and then exhale. We're designed to have a trauma response in certain circumstances and then to be able to restore, reset, and recover. And when we don't get what we need to have that reset, our body holds on to that experience, the response, and these survival mechanisms. So the body needs time, safety, and energy for that completion of a trauma response. And when it doesn't get that, we will see the body still engaging these three survival mechanisms. Think of it like a car that gets stuck with both the gas pedal and the emergency brake engaged. The energy from the original activation, that gas pedal, all that adrenaline and the stress response, it doesn't just disappear. It gets trapped in our tissues. Yet our emergency brake is on. And it creates that constant sense of depletion. It creates that constant sense of stuckness, of immobilization. The emergency brake keeps us not taking action, even though the stress and the adrenaline would normally do that. And that's where we get stuck. 
And the patients that I have seen and the course members now coming through my courses, they are looping between the gas pedal on and the emergency brake on. Stress, 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 and then overwhelm, overwhelm. And in the background, there's this ongoing and building sense of depletion and exhaustion that oftentimes they're trying to compensate for in order to function. That's why we call it a functional freeze. How do these patterns become automatic? This is where neuroplasticity comes in. Did you know that neuroplasticity is involved in wiring in our trauma responses? It becomes involved in how our body holds on to these survival mechanisms, these three survival mechanisms from the trauma response. You likely know the phrase, neurons that wire together, fire together. Every time we cycle through this loop from stress to overwhelm and back, stress to overwhelm, we're deepening these neural pathways that make this pattern more and more automatic. So the same neuroplasticity that helps us learn to play a musical instrument that learns uh, is how we learn how to form a new habit that we can just do things without thinking, play an instrument. It also automates these survival mechanisms that no longer serve us. They are the remnants of the past, but they're wired into our present through neuroplasticity. And so eventually this body trauma loop, this cycling between stress and overwhelm becomes the path of least resistance. We don't have to think about it. Our body knows what it's going to do. Our body knows that it's going to stress out and then it's going to overwhelm. It becomes our default so that it actually would take energy to change the pattern. So Marcus, for you, it's not that your patients are choosing to react this way. Their nervous system has literally been trained and wired this in through neuroplasticity for this to be their default way of moving through life now. And here's what makes this particularly challenging. The biology changes that happen during these trauma responses, they don't just go away. And every time that we cycle through stress and overwhelm through this body trauma loop, the more they get reinforced too the more oxidative stress accumulates, the more inflammation begins to develop, the more our gut is in disorder, the more that our sleep is off, the more that our hormones, our hormones are imbalanced. And so this is now creating a biology that's feeding into those survival mechanisms, a biology that says we're not safe, we're in threat mode, we're creating signals of danger even to the point where we have activated microglia or immune cells in our brain. And these are signaling danger. Our mitochondria, those cellular powerhouses become compromised from the constant cycling between high energy and making a ton of energy with adrenaline and the collapse and the fatigue and the shutdown. This accumulates over time and it overall decreases our capacity to handle stress. And over time, we're handling less and less stress before going into overwhelm. Our neurotransmitter systems get disrupted. Brain chemistry gets disrupted. And this is all at the biological level. This is the biology behind how the body has been holding these patterns and it self-perpetuates now also because of our biology. So what do we do with this? What, what do we do? One of the first actions is to be able to notice when our body, when our nervous system is in the different states. This is something that I talk a lot about in my book. And in fact, I share the nervous system journal that I used in my book with you so that you can start mapping out when you are in the different states. When is it that you are in the stress and sympathetic mode? When during the day do you reach that line that you're going into overwhelm? The more that you can be clear on the cycles and the rhythms of your body, the more that we can know where we can leverage your systems, your biology, your psychology in order to uh, shift that neuroplasticity and create new patterns in programming. And this will need to become a daily practice because we're working with neuroplasticity. Anything that requires a formation of a new habit requires consistency, daily practice. It can't just be once a week therapy session. That's why I need each of you and Marcus, each of your patients to learn 
how to shift their own nervous system so that they can be doing that during the week in between their sessions with you. And finally, these somatic self practices that I have come to find are so powerful. They are the ones that I teach my patients the first before I'm prescribing all of the different supplements and medications and diets and protocols, though those are important. Actually, the most important is for them to learn how to shift their own nervous system using their own anatomy, their own physiology, using their body, their movement. These are things that we can have ability to do and to learn to do for ourselves. Now, you might be recognizing that you have these chronic patterns yourself, and this is what you will then need to apply the essential sequence. Because once you understand and see that, oh, I've got these three survival mechanisms, I do disconnect, I do look for my escape, I do numb, avoid, and distract, I do feel an element of stuckness in my life, this immobilization, or I feel a sense of depletion. These are all the chronic patterns of trauma. And once you've identified that, now you'll need to apply the essential sequence for helping your body release and move out of those. This is where I have the sequence laid out in my steps to identify and heal trauma roadmap. I'll put those in the show notes for you. This idea that there is a specific sequence that we need to follow. It doesn't need to be confusing. I'm not saying that it's easy, but it can be clear and simple. The body has a science that it follows. It has rhythms. It has principles. And as I said in my longer podcast episode, these principles are the same principles that our body uses to heal a broken bone as to heal a broken heart. So we don't need to be confused about how does this healing journey happen? We know the science. We just need to apply the science. Marcus, coming back to answer your question directly, your patient's responses have persisted because now their own biology is maintaining a state of danger at the cellular level through the hormone imbalances, through the oxidative stress, through the inflammation, through the adrenaline levels their own biology is creating a state of danger. They don't actually need anything outside of them. Their own biology is now self-perpetuating their sense of danger. And that is why their nervous system continues to never receive the signal that it's actually safe, that they're safe, that whatever has happened to them in the past is actually over. Their body doesn't know that it's over because it is still receiving signals of danger. And now those signal dangers are coming from their own biology. The encouraging news is this, that the same neuroplasticity that created these patterns can be harnessed to create new ones. When we provide the specific steps and repair that the body needs, these patterns can shift. I see it all the time. It was how I shifted and have my life back. So the key insight I want you to take away is that it's not enough to tell someone they're safe. It's not enough to tell yourself that you are safe. Your body needs the experience. Your body needs to know it at a visceral level, feel it at a visceral level. And so we are going to need to learn how to create that inner safety, complete old responses, repair the systems that got compromised, repair that biology so that we can actually create an internal sense of safety for our nervous system and let it have the rest that it has always wanted to have. I'd love to have some questions from you. So if you want to hop over to the show notes, to LinkedIn or on YouTube, these are places where I'm frequently coming to see what questions do you have and commenting on what patterns do you notice? Do you notice any of these three survival mechanisms still operating in your life today? The dissociation, the immobilization, and the energy conservation. Remember, all of these resources discussed today are in my book and it is available for order. So if you want to order that book, go to biologyoftrauma.com and there you will also find where to get bonuses if you are ordering my book in the pre-order window, which is anything up until its publication date on September 23. Over $400 worth of bonus bundle that I put together for you and you can all find that at biologyoftrauma.com. I am your host, Dr. Amy. Until next time,